Hey, what's up guys? We're here at the Starling HQ and I'm just about to pick up a new bike to test. This is the Starling Roost and we're here with Joe from Starling. He's gonna give us a little run through and uh, tell us all the details that there is to know. And then we'll hit the trails with it and see how it rides. So we, we've never really built a hardtail, so we wanted to do something special. So first batch of these came last year and we've got a second batch coming soon. But um, we've gone with a, a stainless steel hardtail. Um, stainless just to make it special, it's beautiful, it's shiny. <laughs> it's sort of a, it's it a shiny awesome. thing, it yeah. looks lovely. Um, it's uh, one of the key things about it is that it's a mullet. So for me, when I ride a hardtail, I'm riding it for fun. It's it's you're out on a hardtail for an engaging ride, you want it to be fun. An important thing for a fun bike is short chain stays. We couldn't really get the short chain stays with the 29 inch rear wheel and, and the 27 again makes it more maneuverable. So And the tire clearance on this thing's pretty impressive, it, right? It's massive, yeah. We got loads of tire clearance, great for British riding. Um, the chain stays, this is a size large and we've got 430 stays. We've actually got different size stays with different size bikes. So the medium is 425. Um, the XL was 435, and that gives a really good balance between the different different sizes. Other geometry that's important, really, 64 degree head angle. On a hard tail, because it always sags forwards, it steepens up, so you want a, you want a steeper head angle. Um, this bike is actually designed for a 140 mil fork. I, I personally think if you have long travel forks on hard tails, there's too much change in pitch. Yeah and it throws your weight around too much as you're riding. So although it makes it a bit more harsh to ride, I suppose you could argue, it's more fun and it's more stable and it's- More better. predictable too, yeah. right, I guess. Yeah, it, it, it rides better, I think. So, um, so mullet, short stays, 64 head angle, um, stainless steel, um, what other details are there? So it's a plain 44 mil head tube, easy to get forks for that. Can you get it painted? No, no. I wouldn't let you. <laughs> you could, you could, but there's no point. The point of stainless is it doesn't rust. Yeah. It's, it's a natural finish. There's no, there's no finish on it. And this, this bike is, um, well, 18 months old. Oh, this is one of the first samples. It's been ridden a lot. Wow. It still looks really good. So yeah, you wouldn't be able to tell. No, James just took, our mechanic just took a little bit of wire wool, like fine wire wool, and you can just buff it up and make it clean. So. They just keep looking good for a really long time. Yeah. I suppose one of the other key things I thought a lot about was um, cable routing. A lot of hardtails have some of the routing, so they tend to put the dropper post coming out the bottom here and running along the, the down tube. Yeah. But they tend to put the other cables along the top tube. And my, my kind of inherent OCD with simplicity, that makes me feel really uneasy that you've mm -hmm. got cables running along different places. So Multiple different mounts for no yeah. real reason. And just right? aesthetically, it looks bad having cables running in different places. So we've got all the cables running along the down tube. Yeah. Um, what that means though, is that we have to have these slightly raised bottle bosses so that the bottle has got clearance from the uh, from the cables, but that's, yeah. that's no issue at all. That well, there's, really there's other manufacturers who don't do that. Right. Still run their cables around yeah. the bottle cage and then you put a cage on it and it yeah. like everything yeah. gets all messed up. Yeah. So. so the cable Smart. ring looks, you can see they're really nice lines. It runs really nice and smoothly. Yeah. Um, we've got this yoke feature. This, this caused, when we first released it, it caused a bit of controversy, this yoke feature. Hyper of a hard tail. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. But the logic behind it was the hard tails of, oh, sorry, the full suspension bikes have kind of got that design and it gives really good tire clearance. It yeah. works really well. So all we've done, it's just move it forward 10 mil and um, yeah, and mount it off a couple of weights. So it's the same design as the, the full suspension bikes. A lot of people will be saying, oh, it gives you really bad chain slap. It doesn't. If you think about it, having a shorter distance between the, um, the chain and the chain stay, the shorter the distance is, the less it's going to slap because it's got less time to accelerate. Mm -hmm. So, and put a, bit of, put a bit of 3M tape on it, no chain slap. It's, yeah. it's you know. Nice and quiet. You get, you get chains up because your mech's knackered, essentially. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, people buying one, what are the options? What are the prices? Okay. So we've got a batch turning up soon. Um, I think it is September. Um, the frame set, because it's stainless, it is kind of a premium price. So it's it's twelve hundred pounds, twelve twenty, I think, for the for the frame set alone. Yeah. But it will last forever, you know, because it's stainless steel, second-hand value is going to be high because it keeps looking lovely. Yeah. Um, 
and then we can do anything from frame only to full build. So this is this is kind of a typical build of what we can do. We we quite often supply these middle burn cranks. Yeah. You know, lovely British made product. Really suits the steel bikes. Um, this has got a pair of MT7 brakes on. So you're a big chap. I think you need the MT7s. I'm thankful for them. Yeah. Um, and then bike yoke droppers, really good products. We've had, you know, they've just been totally they reliable. They just work, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, at the moment, we're supplying fun build kits. It's sort of reliable, good quality stuff. Um, we tend to get wheels custom built um, using a local wheel builder. So we always supply really good quality wheels, which again, makes a bike ride well. Yeah. Um, and then this one's got an Olin's fork on it. Um, typically, because it's 140 mil travel, we supply pikes, which is a really good fork for this build. Absolutely. Um, and then a build, you know, I think I imagine this would be around 4K, 4.5K. Okay. So, so not, um, not crazy money then, um, certainly for a, a premium build kit. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, and just to reiterate, size options. Yeah, okay. So there are three sizes, medium, large, extra large. Um, I tend to find on a hardtail, we've already got, so the reach on these bikes, we didn't talk about that, is um, this is a large. On our full, uh, full suspension bikes, I run 485 reach. This is 475. So again, we've sized it down a tiny bit. But what I felt more is, because it's a bike for fun, you want to size down even more. Like I was mm -hmm. riding, I was sort of halfway between a medium and a large, and I'm 5'11", 5'10", 5'11". Yeah. Um, so I kind of preferred the medium for fun, but large was better for pedaling. I think this will be a pretty good size. The large yeah. will be a pretty good size for you. But Certainly. I think you'll probably XL and a few brands, aren't you? And uh, I tend to size down anyway. Okay. So okay. Uh, yeah, I certainly had a little play around in the car park on it. It's feeling like a good size to me. Yeah. And I guess that's a good segue into uh, hitting the trails and finding out how it rides. Let's go. Come on. All right, onto one of the reds, lens trail. It's a mixture of tech and flow called ACDC. And right away, a lot of fun. Woo. Definitely loose today in the corner cup. A very fun bike to test indeed, um, especially on some of the slightly smoother and mellower trails in the valley, um, which we'll get onto in a little bit. Starling has done a really good job, I think, of creating a product that is nice and clean and simple and really uh, you know, retains their core values, just making something that's kind of no BS with all the details fairly well covered, um, but still giving it a nice bit of flair thanks to that stainless steel finish. It looks absolutely amazing in the flesh um, and that pretty unique. Uh, train stay yoke that uh, you know takes a little bit of the styling from their full sas bikes um, yeah i think the sterling roost looks great and the decisions that they've made in their kind of philosophy for how it's set up for how the uh, geometry works when you're riding it for their full uh, first hardtail i think they've done a cracking job as well most important thing i think is that they've been really realistic about the the limitations of a hardtail so rather than making it one of these, you know, crazy raked out 61 degree head tube angle bikes, uh, hardtails that, you know, you do see, I don't see a huge amount of point in those bikes because there's only so much your knees, your legs can take. There's only so much uh, you can keep that rear wheel on the ground and tracking in rougher stuff. 
So if you start having the confidence to push the bike hard enough because it's so stable in the steering thanks to a 61 degree head tube angle, you end up with so much more speed coming into sections than realistically you should be taking on a bike with no rear travel. Um, and you just end up in the danger zone. Of course, you can ride it out, but you're also losing on the, the agility that you could potentially have by having a slightly more yeah, realistic, agile geometry like Stalin's given this roost. And I think for me, for a bike, you can still ride really hard, but um, ultimately it's a hardtail. You're probably not gonna be wanting to ride it on the roughest, gnarliest, steepest, fastest tracks. For the tra trails that you will want to ride on it, the slightly flowier stuff, um, or like slower, more nibbly descents, the geometry that Starlin's chosen for this roost, I think is fantastic and uh, makes for a serious amount of fun. Things that really stand out to me, climbing performance, seated position is pretty spot on for a blend of kind of climbing. It's not super upright and cramped, designed only for going up super steep climbs. It's not way off the back it's a nice middle ground where you're happy to sit and spin on flatter you know road connections to the trails flatter climbs no problem but when it does get really steep it doesn't limit you it doesn't stop any weight being on that front wheel you know of course being a hardtail you only get fork dive and more for force through that front wheels as fork goes into its travel um, so you don't really struggle until it gets super super steep to keep the weight on the front wheel and keep this thing pointing in the right direction. And because they've not chosen to go super slack with that front end, you can still direct yourself really easily on the climbs, on the tech stuff especially, make the you know quick little swoops to get onto the smoother line that the hardtail is gonna be able to get up. Um, and it climbs really well. It's comfortable. Um, obviously, there's no suspension bob to worry about. It's, uh, yeah, definitely a solid climber. I think they've done a really good job there. Onto the flurrier stuff, cornering. This thing, for a hardtail especially, because I don't typically find that I gel that well with hardtails when it comes to absolutely destroying a turn, you know, just tipping it in and pushing as hard as you can. For some reason, I've always struggled with the balance of the hardtails um, and find that I just don't quite get the, the rear wheel to break loose where I want it to, just, you know, generally not get the timing quite right on them. And that's not for a want of you know it's not like i've not spent enough time on them when i have tested them in the past when i have ridden them in the past to get that feeling it's just that i don't know for me anyway the more balanced you know uh, front and rear wheel kind of moving together of a full suspension bike does seem to feel better typically until i got onto this thing and uh turns out hardtails can corner really well because this thing is a serious amount of fun some of the uh smoother like incredible berms at bike park wales that i took this thing on were an absolute blast i was you know trying to rip the tire off the rim it was just feeling amazing so that's an absolute highlight of this bike um jumping it i'm not convinced it's fantastic only because it hurts your knees when you land because it's a hardtail i prefer full suspension bikes let's uh not dwell on that too much but as hardtails go it felt all right um rough stuff again it's a hardtail so yeah i i'm not going to be the person to say that this stainless steel frame has you know comparable more or less flex than any other steel frame on the market to me it still feels very stiff regardless of the you know reasonable case and tire and the cush core xc in the back that it, this has it's still hurts your knees if you're pushing really hard and you do struggle a little bit to keep that rear wheel on the ground. I did a couple of times come into sections, you know, slightly forgetting that I was on a hardtail perhaps, plow through them um, and come out the other side still in one piece. But uh, yeah, I, I, this thing doesn't work any miracles. It's not a super compliant rear end. Make no mistake, this is a hardtail. You will feel the rough stuff coming through your feet. Um, but yeah, like I say, the geometry, I think Starlin's done a great job. It still retains enough sort of in the bike feeling. You feel confident enough when you're going fast, especially on smoother terrain. And then when you want to dive side to side on the trail, pick your really you know tight and technical lines, this thing does it really well. And uh, it's a serious amount of fun. And I think Starlin's done a fantastic job with their first hardtail in making an all-round shredder for a hardtail anyway. Um, pricing wise, 
the price is quite high, especially for like a not UK made you know, ultra boutique frame. Um, it is made in Taiwan by a very reputable factory out of a fancy material, stainless steel, which I mean, certainly from, uh, I think this, Joe said that this is maybe a two year old bike um, and you wouldn't be able to tell. The frame still looks super fresh and uh, super nice. He said that one of the mechanics uh, had just taken a bit of wire wool to it to uh, yeah, restore some of the shine and you could theoretically keep on doing that for forever until the material eventually fatigues um, and yeah it's uh it's certainly a really nice quality product but it's a lot of money and uh yeah just needed to address that but if you've got the money to uh spend on uh this stainless steel hardtail then the starling roost is absolutely a bike that i would uh, say is a huge amount of fun and one that i could honestly recommend uh, in terms of the build kit, otherwise, I think Starlin's typical builds are fairly no nonsense to kind of go along with that frame. Nothing on this screams out like overly flashy for the sake of it. I'm not a huge fan necessarily of the Middleburn cranks. Um, I know I'll get some hate, especially from some UK people there, but they're not my favorite. This left crank is actually bent. Um, whether that would have been bent on a you know different alternative, I'm not sure, but. Uh, other than that, yeah, absolutely solid. Hope wheel set with GT Swiss rims, bike yoke dropper, Magura brakes. You can't really go wrong. They, uh, yeah, certainly. If you were to buy this bike, I don't think you'd have many issues and uh, many complaints at all. I hope you guys have enjoyed checking out this review video on the Starling Roost. Um, if you guys are big hardtail fans, do let us know in the comments and uh, maybe we'll be convinced to get on board another one in the future. And for now, leave us a comment, let us know what you think of this particular bike give us a like if you enjoyed the video and be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more awesome content on awesome bikes like the starling roost thanks for tuning in guys catch you out on the trails